Okay, so now we're on to part two of our ASME code calculations. So this time we're going to do piping and drums and other thicker walled pressure vessels. So we did tubing before, now we're going to follow the same sort of procedure with just some different equations and some different factors when we deal with piping, drums, headers, and other pressure vessels such as that. So just a reminder that you can access the ASME code document on Blackboard. So we're going to be using that as our, for our examples and also to read and familiarize ourselves with that code document. Okay, so when we're talking about piping, drums, shells, headers, etc., etc., um, not tubing, uh, we have a series of calculations. So we can find those on page four of your document under PG 27.2.2, again, formulas for calculation for piping, drums, shells, and headers. Um, so we have four equations now, and let's talk through some of the details on these four equations. First of all, what we have is two sets of equations. We have equations for thickness, and I have two different ways to calculate thickness, and I have equations for pressure, so two different ways that I can calculate pressure. And if we look at the difference between these two equations, um, they look fairly similar, but uh, there's something that's really important and can cause you some grief when you're doing your calculations. So first of all, what we see is there's a difference between these, which is that the equations on the left hand side use capital D and the equations on the right hand side use capital R. And if we go to our code and we looked up in our table of symbols, what we'd see is that D is our outside diameter of cylinder and R is inside radius of cylinder. Now the D and the R aren't important. What's important here is the inside and outside. So you have two sets of equations, and really the equations on the left side, the ones that in this case are D equations, are really talking about outside measurements. The one on the right hand side is talking about inside measurements. Okay, and it's a really important distinction that we have two different sets of equations. You gotta be really careful here. So a really common error is that you're given an inside diameter of a of a drum or something like that and so you see diameter and you grab the diameter version of the equation but no 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 that's not right you have to look at it do i have inside measurements or do i have outside measurements so if you have say for instance your inside diameter divide it by two and get your inside radius, and that applies to the equations on the right-hand side. Your other option, I guess, would be to take your inside diameter and add two thicknesses, but that's no use to you if what you're trying to do in the question is add or figure out your thickness. So it's always best to arrange either that radius or diameter into either the inside measurements or the outside measurements. Um, you're going to have a really bad time if you don't realize that distinction. So some of the factors we don't know, um, one of them is why the temperature coefficient. So this is new to us. We didn't have that back in tubing. Um, and if we look at the list, uh, y is defined as the temperature coefficient and take a look at 27.4. And if we go to 27.4.6, we're going to find this table. And this table lists out a number of materials. And it also lists out a number of temperatures. And if we look at the temperatures, we can see that they're very high. So 480 degrees Celsius uh, and above. Uh, I guess around 510 Celsius is where we even start to see any changes to the values in these tables. So we really have specialized materials at very high temperatures that are going to be impacted by this Y value. 
Um, if we do need to, we could interpolate within this table to find a y value. And if we have a non-ferrous material, uh, then y is going to be equal to 0 0.4. So really, we have a table where we have very sort of rare cases, very high temperatures, specifically identified materials. And in most cases, y is going to be equal to 0 0.4. You should still check to make sure your material isn't one that's listed or identified on this table and that your temperature isn't so high that you're up in those ranges. But for most cases, why 0 0.4? Okay, so let's talk about efficiency. So what is efficiency? We have this capital E value. So be careful because we had a lowercase e in the last one. That was our expanded two bends. So be careful you're not confusing the capital E with the lowercase e. So capital E says it's efficiency. Okay, so let's find out what that really means. PG 27.4.1, and if we look that up in our code document, then we're going to find um, a paragraph here. And it says capital E is equal to 1.0 for seamless cylinders without opening space to form ligaments. And the next statement E is equal to the ligament efficiency. Um, so I guess we've got to figure out what is a ligament. And what we get if we talk about a ligament is we have, say for instance, a drum. And if we cut holes into it, so we have some tubes that go into the drum, or we have other connections that come off the drum, we've now weakened that structure. And so depending on the size of the holes, the orientation of the holes, if we've strengthened them, um, we potentially have weakened this pressure vessel. And so when we look at ligaments, you're going to be given a value likely to say your ligament efficiency is 75%, okay, or it's 100%. Uh, but either way, what you're going to do is you're going to take that efficiency percentage and we'll convert it to a decimal. So we'll use a decimal for this as our value in our calculations. We also have a couple other sort of sub clauses in here. One of them is if it's seamless and there's no ligaments then E is 100% or 1. And if we have a welded seam then we're going to go back to that W value that we used before which is our um, um, seam weld um, reduction factor. Um, so if we have a welded seam and no ligaments, E is equal to W. But remember that we only really had a W in some very extreme situations, so very high temperatures with certain materials. So it's very likely that your W would be 1. We also have two other cases with the paragraph at the bottom. So if we have a ligament and a welded seam. So if we have a ligament and a welded seam, and we have two situations, the, either the seam goes through where the ligaments are, or those holes are, or else the seam does not. And so if the seam does not go through, E is going to be equal to whatever smaller, the W value or the efficiency. Or else, if the seam goes through the ligament, then our efficiency times W is going to be capital E. As I said, the good news is, is that in most of your calculations, if not all, W is going to be 1. And so if W is 1, it means that pretty much your value for this whole clause is capital E is going to be equal to your efficiency as a decimal. So no matter how we work it out, that's likely what your answer is going to be out of this clause. We have another clause, um, C, which is the minimum allowance for threading and structural stability. So paragraph 27.3, our symbols, says, OK, C is, is the minimum allowance. C paragraph. 27.4.3. And so if we go look at that, um, we've got a fairly long section. 
what this is talking about is C is really a factor that we can add in to increase the, the thickness of a pressure part if we know that we're going to have some problem. And that problem might be because we've cut threads into the pipe. But it could also be that in order to maintain the structural integ integrity of the pipe, so it has a large overhang or something like that, or has to carry a load, we may need to strengthen the pipe by adding in extra thickness. And it could also account for things like corrosion or erosion. Um, so over time, that pipe is going to lose some of its thickness, and we may want to take that into account. If we do cut threads into the pipe, then we have a couple of equations in this clause that tell us how much thickness to add. And that's going to be depending on the size of the pipe, the type of threads we're cutting in. But in general, for non-threaded pipes, um, so drums and headers, um, we would not have to add a C value to this unless we're specified that, you know, we need to add some amount for corrosion allowance or something. And that would be the C value that you would add to. Okay, so I think we've got the basics down. Next, we're going to go in and do some calculations based on drums, pipes, etc.